Stimulating fiber investment is a very important aspect of FTTH and I have with me Stefan Stanislavski who knows all about that. Stefan, how much does it cost? Well, if we're going to fiber the whole of the EU 27, so that's 210 million homes, 500 million population, that would be 270 billion euros to do everything from scratch. Some has already been spent, of course, by the operators, about 11 billion. And with sharing of ducts and reuse of infrastructure, it could come down maybe towards 220, something like that. It's a little bit uncertain, but it's a couple of hundred billion euros. And how do you go about raising something like that? Well, that's a good question, and there are, there are two answers. It depends whether you want to build quickly or slowly. So if you wanted to build quickly, there is a way uh, called public-private partnership that could be used in countryside areas particularly, where the government will spend some money, not as a grant, but year by year. So it's like pretend revenue, and the company that builds the network can borrow against that, and of course against the revenues from customers. And there's a well-established formula, project finance technique used in many industries to build dams, bridges, and so on. That could be deployed. What we learned is there's no shortage of money to invest in fiber. In fact, there are funds desperate to invest in it, but it's a question of the structure and the way it's done. The slow way is to uh, ask the telco to reinvest the money that they are already paid for modernization. So in your phone bill and broadband bill every month, because of the way the regulatory cost model works, there's an assumption about the asset life. So for an overhead wire in Britain, where we are today, it's 18 years. So the cost and the charge to you is worked out on the basis that wire will be replaced every 18 years. Now that obviously isn't happening, because when you average it out, 18 years for overhead and longer for fixed, 3 or 4% a year. So every year we should see 3 or 4% of homes connected to fibre, and that is what the customer is paying for. And what's surprising, perhaps, uh, when you're new to this, is that that's not happening. The customer is not getting what they're paying for. That money is going somewhere else. It's a mystery as to what it is. But So the slow way is to ask the telco really to spend and do what they're paid to do already by the customer. That would get us fibre everywhere in 25 years. The current rate of progress, sadly, we're on track for the fibre switchover in 92 years, which is a long time. So what's your feeling? Is it going to be a mixture of both? I think that's what will happen, it will be a mixture of both. The, the most important political change would be a commitment to a fibre switchover. It's entirely feasible and possible and that 25-year programme would only use about half of the existing annual capex budget of the telcos, so it wouldn't disturb dividends or any, any other feature of that kind. So I think this, the frame of the debate has to change from what's the business case and the benefit to why are we not doing something that long term is actually cheaper for the customer and probably a bit more profitable for the shareholder long term and is eminently affordable? That's the real question. It's essentially a political question. When there's a commitment, all the various mechanisms and details, they'll all fall into place behind that leadership. But we need the leadership. Great. OK, well, thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you.